Constructing explanations and engaging an argument from evidence are featured prominently in the Next Generation Science Standards as indicated by the list of practices for K-12 science classrooms. In this video, I will explain how these practices are related, but yet are different. First, let us take a step back and think about the big picture. We would argue that the primary goal of school science is for students to demonstrate their understanding of accepted scientific ideas. Many scientific ideas are explanations, which are causal accounts of phenomena that link scientific theory with specific observations. Many scientific ideas may seem crazy to students because they are counter to their everyday experiences and intuition. These are some examples of crazy scientific ideas, and I'm sure you can think of others. Day and night are caused by a spinning earth. The earth is 5 billion years old. Diseases are caused by tiny living organisms. And we live at the bottom of a sea of air. Some of these ideas are explanations. For example, the notion of an earth that spins once every 24 hours explains day and night and the idea that there are invisible tiny living organisms explains diseases. When students construct explanations, they apply theoretical ideas such as these to explain phenomena. Some of these ideas are not explanations because they do not provide causal accounts. They are nevertheless scientific facts because they are supported by such an overwhelming body of evidence. Students are more likely to believe the scientific ideas if they engage in argument from evidence. We define this scientific practice as the process of coordinating claims, evidence, and reasoning. A claim is an assertion about the natural world. Scientific claims include assertions about what exists in the universe and what causes natural phenomena. For example, the statements, this rock is a sedimentary rock, a whale is a mammal, and argon is an inert gas are all claims, but they are not causal claims. Evidence is information that indicates whether or not the claim is valid. Reasoning is the explanation of how evidence supports the claim. A simple argument coordinates one claim and one piece of evidence with reasoning. We would like for students to progress in their argumentation abilities so they are coordinating multiple claims and pieces of evidence and reasoning. There are some additional ideas that distinguish constructing explanations from engaging in argument from evidence. The latter scientific practice requires that there is some uncertainty as to which scientific idea is best in light of current theory and evidence. If the data clearly points to one idea, there is little need to construct, defend, and critique arguments. When there is ambiguity in the meaning of data, there are opportunities for students to engage in argument from evidence. The process is contextualized in the sense that uncertainty depends on the background knowledge and evidence available to, to individuals. Scientists today would not engage in arguments about the overarching idea of plate tectonics. There is scientific consensus that large land masses move and produce ocean trenches and mountain ranges at their intersections. However, in the early 1900s, Wegener constructed an argument that led to the theory of plate tectonics. Nearly all others critiqued his argument, which competed with the then current idea that the cooling and contraction of the Earth caused mountain ranges. Naturally, students might have similar, similar difficulty believing what at first seems like a crazy idea, that continents can actually move. Like scientists of the past, students are also uncertain about what causes mountain ranges. Engaging students in looking at the evidence for plate tectonics and the arguments that can be made helps them to be convinced that it is a better explanation. To further understand how constructing explanations and engaging an argument from evidence are related, let's examine two competing explanations about the causes of mid-ocean ridges, which are shown in the map below. Julia says, I think mid-ocean ridges were formed by lifting up and spreading of the ocean floor. Martin says, 
I think mid-ocean ridges are ripples that were formed by the cooling and contraction of the Earth. Julia responds, The basalt is younger near ocean crests, and the sediment cover is thinner near the ridge. The contraction idea doesn't fit with these observations, since it would suggest that the age of the basalt would be the same in different places. In her response, Julia provides evidence and reasoning. Julia's and Martin's explanations are causal claims because they provide a possible mechanism that led to the phenomenon of mid-ocean ridges. Together, Julia's claim, evidence, and reasoning constitute an argument. Her argument would be more complex if she included more evidence and reasoning and critique of the competing explanation. In her argument, only the causal claim is the explanation, and until the argument is accepted, the explanation remains tentative. Once there is a widespread acceptance of the argument for the causal claim, the evidence for it is rarely discussed. It moves from being contested to something that is indisputably the case. Most of school science deals with accepted scientific explanations or theories. For students to engage in argument from evidence, they need opportunities to coordinate evidence with the accepted scientific explanations and, ideally, to critique alternative explanations. I will use the Venn diagram below to summarize the presentation. I would encourage you to pause the video now and make the diagram, adding aspects of explanations and arguments that coincide in aspects that are different. After you have synthesized your understanding, then restart the video. Causal claims are tentative explanations for natural phenomena that may be part of an argument. Claims are not always explanations because claims may be about what exists in the universe. Engaging in argument requires individuals to coordinate claims, reasoning, and evidence, whereas explanations provide causal accounts of phenomena using theory. Lastly, engaging in argument requires uncertainty, but explanation does not. Explanations may be firmly established within a scientific community. When there is consensus about how to explain a phenomenon, then there is no purpose to engage in argument. Science has achieved closure and scientists move on. The litmus test for whether what your students are doing is constructing an explanation or alternatively engaging in argument from evidence is whether they are just using the explanation to explicate why something happened. For instance, if a student says there was an earthquake today because the San Andreas fault moved, he or she is just constructing an explanation. To be an argument, however, there has to be some evidence and reasoning to justify the explanation. In this case, the data from the seismometers near the fault measured the movement of the fault. We hope this video has helped you understand how constructing explanations and engaging in argument from evidence are related yet different.